Hi guys, in this tutorial, we're going to look at creating a very simple eyeball purely for sculpting in Blender. So it won't be a very realistic eyeball that can be rendered out. It's simply just to aid us in sculpting. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and create a very simple eyeball that we can use in our sculpt. Now for the eyeball, we don't need any objects in the viewport. So we can just simply go to select all and then object delete. So the object that we will be adding for the eyeball will be quite obviously a sphere. So go to add mesh UV sphere and we can leave the default as is. You don't need to uh, really modify this. Uh, you can if you want to, but you don't need to. So straight away, I'm going to go into edit mode by hitting tab and then go to the side view by hitting numpad three or just go to view uh, viewpoint right. That's also numpad three and then hit R90 on your keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so when we go to the front view by hitting one on our numpad, we can see that the eyeball is sort of facing us. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the middle point over here. And then we're just going to go to control plus and then plus once more just to select those two loops. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the side view and go S Y minus one. That will invert it in the other direction. And then also from the side view, we're just going to move it in on the Y axis. So go to G, Y, and let's just move it in. Just so, uh, just so that I can see that better. I might just go in, in a little bit more. Like so. And I think that's a good starting point. Also what I'll do is I'll scale this down a little. So we have something that looks like that. Finally, I'll go ahead and hit E to extrude and move it in, just straight in, like so. And we have the basic shape of our eyeball for sculpting. Okay, so we can now make it look a little bit more sharper by adding a subdivision surface. So go to modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface, and straight away we can see that it looks not really that nice looking. We need to sharpen it out by adding in some holding loops. So tab into edit mode and then Go control R and add in a loop cut and go all the way near this loop over here. Same from this side, control R and all the way near over here. And do the same thing for the other areas. This one and this one. So you have something that looks like this. You can see the corners are a little bit more sharper now. Maybe if I just increase the viewport count, we can see that a little better. Okay, so we're now starting to get that eyeball shape, which is good. But I think this part here is looking a little bit, um, you can sort of see that pinching effect. And that's purely because we have a lot of triangles. So if I just turn off the subdivision view for a second, we can see that we have a lot of triangles. So we don't want triangles, we want to turn that into quads. So I select the middle vertex and then hit X to delete just the vertices. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is we just want to select nine random vertices over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then same on the top as well. So select that one. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we want to fill this with uh, quads, like like down like this and also like this. The quickest way to do this is by using a grid fill. So go F3 and search for grid. And then you'll find something called grid fill. Go ahead and click that. And you, you've now filled up this area with only quads. No more triangles. So if I turn this on now, we can see that we don't get any pinching effect anywhere. Okay, we also need to sharpen out the ends over here. So let me just go ahead and add in a loop cut over here and also here. Okay, cool. What I might also do is I'll just go ahead and select this entire area and I'll just smooth it. So, oops. So go to vertex, smooth vertices. And I'll just do this uh, a couple of times. So just turn the count up a little. Maybe 10 times. And that should look better. So that's looking good. What I want to do is I want to make the, the iris part of the eye a little bit bigger compared to the pupil. So that's an also easy to fix. So just go ahead and select all the vertices in this vicinity over here. Like so. And then uh, just scale it down. But don't scale it on the Y axis. So go S shift y and i'll scale on all axes except the y axis 
Okay, so we can make our iris look even bigger and perhaps we can move it back in a little bit more as well. Okay, so we have something that looks like that. Okay, so finally just to finish it off, go to Object, Shade, Smooth and we have a nice looking eyeball. So if I look at it in matcap, the stereotypical matcap that we use for characters, we have something that looks like that. When we create our characters for sculpting, we're not going to rely on one eyeball, we'll need to use two eyeballs. So I'd also recommend you go ahead and add in another modifier called the mirror modifier. And then once you've done that, you can't really see anything on the viewport. That's because the center of the object is right over here. So it's just mirroring on itself, if that makes sense. So if I tab into edit mode, select all vertices by hitting A, or go select all, that's the same thing. And then go G, X and move it out from the X axis. So now you have two eyeballs. So this will come in handy when you do sculpting, because later on if you decide that you want to make the eyeballs a little closer, or further apart from each other, you can do that at the later stage. You don't need to apply the subdivision or the mirror modifier, purely because when you, while you're doing sculpting, you may want to move the eyeballs closer or further apart from each other. Um, really depends on the type of character that you're creating. So you, you probably want to keep these modifiers here as it will be, as it will come in handy. Okay, so just to finish off the model and uh, to make it you know usable for your future sculpts as well, I'd go ahead and name this something nice, like eyeball, and save this as a separate Blender file. This way, if you create future characters, you can keep reusing the same, the same file again and again without having to model the eyeball from scratch every single time. Okay, work smarter, not harder. Alright, cool, so that's it. We have a pair of eyeballs. So in the next tutorial, we'll start to get to the more exciting part and actually start to sculpt a realistic looking face. So, see you then.